Welcome back to another episode of Country Cold Cans. I'm Logan sitting here with Andy and Kyle. Be sure to give us five stars and a great review wherever you get your podcast, Spotify, Apple Podcast, Amazon, Stitcher. We are there. So give us five stars and a great review and share it with your friends. Also check out the website, coldcansnetwork.com for blog content and the shop. We have a brand new blog by the first time author, Trucker Andy. He gave his thoughts on the Kip Moore, Morgan Wade, uh, situation that went down uh check out more at coldcansnetwork.com andy you are now a officially a published author on the site how does it feel i never thought i'd be able to put words into readable formats <laughs> fair <laughs> i read your college papers <laughs> yeah, so, if anybody knows it won't good andy one time had to write a um a paper on a movie so he picked the movie free willy and it was now, a one this page was paper. just a basic mistake. That's not a writing mistake. Well, free we'll Willy? The, yeah, Free Willy is what he chose. And Andy wrote, and, like, and I'm going to paraphrase here, but this is pretty close to the original, Kyle. He wrote, every time he refer, it was supposed to be Free Willy, he referred to him as Wet Willy. I got the movie name wrong. And Andy, trying to be a walking thesaurus, decided to use big words. And Andy said, Wet Willy came wet and erect out of the water and for all the children to see. Oh man, that's like a ex- that's like a not safe for work Dr. Seuss parody. <laughs> it was on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I like the 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 uh, it's not it's not alliteration the rhyming scheme you did. I don't know the technical English term for that. I remember I read it and I was like, dude, you can't turn this in. <laughs> I, in my all fairness, I thought the name was the movie was Wet Willie. This was pre internet on cell phones. I couldn't Google Wet Willie. <laughs> Wet Willie. You coming erect out of the water. Hey, what's your Willie? <laughs> I mean, Either Willie way, was wet. He was in the water. <laughs> That's true. I guess te- on a technicality, Andy's right. Easy, <laughs> but all right. So the big topic today that we're going to use the whole episode to cover is Co Wetzel's El Paso has officially gotten here. It dropped on Friday. We've had time to listen to it multiple times and digest it over the weekends. We've got some thoughts on it. Um, this was. A, he kind of had been talking about in, in some interviews that they wanted to go with kind of a more heavier rock alternative sound uh, that on most of the record, I think he was successful in uh, hitting that goal. Um, one of the things that I, I kind of wanted to bring up before we kind of give our thoughts on the album as a whole was the he included skits once again, like he did on Harold Saw High and Sell Out. This time, I think the skits work better than they did on the previous ones. And this is just from my perspective, each one, like the first one opens up with him talking about uh, like it's catching him on a, uh, the pre-recording before they're about to record a song. And he's saying that it's almost like the end of an era, maybe not quite the end of an era, but kind of the end of what they've been doing the last two years before they do their country. And then he kind of cuts off and then middle of the uh, album, the second skit he's it's called cheers. He cheers, the people that like the record cheers the people that dislike the record. And then he said, he cheers the people that are the uh, motherfuckers who say that this motherfucker doesn't know anything about country music. And then you hear a glass shatter. Then the final one is kind of a, um, a snippet of a song that uh, presumably according to the liner notes that he's gotten a writing credit for it. So it must be a song he's written that he played a little bit of. And it's definitely a country song um, that the last skits called to be continued. Um, that was an interesting part, but I think, my perspective is that this is pointing towards what he's been saying in a lot of interviews. And he just confirmed it recently in a whiskey riff interview on their podcast, whiskey riff raff, that the next record is going to be a nineties inspired country record. And the next like little bit of music is going to be country music. Cause you know, he's been doing rock for a while going back to noise complaint. Now, Andy, I know you have a difference of opinion on that. I, uh, I don't believe anything co says at all. The, like the, for example, it, He's unbelievable on Twitter, and depending on which Instagram page you follow of Co Wetzel's, one can't believe anything he says. The other one, I don't think is actually him. I think it's his people. You can believe that one. Now, if this came out on that page, I'd believe that. Anything out of Co's mouth, don't believe him. But for that reason right there is why I believe it, because it's included on the record, meaning that the management team knows about it. It's not just him sitting there after drinking a fifth of Jack Daniels one night, tweeting it out 
about ripping cigs and feeding the cows. And then, you know, he, two hours later, he's like, I ain't even got no fucking cows. I think this oh, is a little different because it's on the album. But then it goes a master of fucking with people. Putting it on the Fair. album is, is a top tier fucking with people. <laughs> that would be top tier troll. What do you think, Kyle? I tend to agree with Andy, actually. I think he's just... Yeah, I, I, I'd i mentioned to you about playing a funny game about Co Wessel's Twitter account. Um, I think... Yeah, I, I don't believe it. I believe it when I'm... I won't believe it until I'm proved wrong. Um, how old is he now? He's I know he's always he said just, 30. He just turned 30. Okay, I mean, that might be the only honest thing that he because he's he's held that principle for a while he's been consistent saying that by the time he's around 30 he's gonna put out a country album but i'm still gonna believe when i see it i just i think this dude just loves fucking around just fucking with people look i get where you guys come from trust me because there's not i'm not gonna lie there's not a part in the back of my mind being like yeah he could be fucking with people it wouldn't surprise me now no i do believe this the one thing you said he tweeted something about the next album, right? No, he said it in an interview with on okay. the podcast. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I was wondering because I wanted to see the timestamp. <laughs> yeah. The time of the night that it had it, really it, does depend. It, yeah. If this is like a 12 30, 1 a.m. tweet, yeah, I'm not buying it. Oh, you know, shit. This, More like 3 4 a.m. sometimes. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. If it's 8 a.m., yeah, his, you know, his manager or whatever tweeted it, and I might believe it. I mean, how do you know he's not still going at 8 a.m.? He might be. But if he's still going at 8 a.m., he's not remembering to hit go on scheduled tweets. <laughs> well, let us know what you think. If you click in the Spotify description, click the link where you can leave an up to one minute voicemail. Tell us who you think is right on this, because I think that is there is a country record coming. But I wouldn't be surprised if Andy and Kyle are right. We'll figure that out, though, as we get closer to that. But right now, we have El Paso. So this one's been released. Um, like he said, and like I said earlier, I think that he was kind of successful in leaning into that more alternative sound. I would even say, compared to Harold Saul High and Sella, this is a little bit more alternative rock sounding than the previous. Um, the other ones, like especially Harold Saul High, I think, Andy, you and I at the time, we had said that like it kind of has like a a weird like grunge meets country kind of feel to it where this one, I think, especially in a song like sad song comes across to me as like more alternative rock. Um, the, but there are some moments that aren't really straight up alternative rock. Like, you know, you've got three weeks, which is the obvious outlier. And then you've got things like better without you and, and uh yellow bush road that if tweaked a little bit, you could hear being right at home on mainstream country radio. You know what I mean? And like kind of that mainstream country rock kind of sound, um, then you've got things like Oklahoma Sun, which was a co-write with Ernest that just is different than a lot of the other stuff. Uh, but Cabo is one that's interesting to me sonically because it it incorporates a lot of like Southwestern, like Spanish, Latin American kind of sounds in with like rock and a tinge of just a small tinge of country. But uh, Co has been first, very – go ahead. I was just saying like the first 15 seconds of that song are like a Western showdown music. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That song is hilarious. Oh, it, it very much <laughs> that is. <song> it's <laughs> hilarious. Man. It's all over the place. It, it's but. it's one of those things with this record that Co has been out front about this and even kind of addressed it in the second skit in Cheers. This isn't a country record. So if you're listening to this, you're expecting a country record. One, you probably clicked it by accident because you aren't a Co Wetzel fan. But two, we're not going to spend any time on the air here debating whether or not it's country because it's not. The artist says it's not. We know it's not. We're moving past that. Reality is. Uh, Ko Wetzel is, can be a div- divisive figure in independent music for whatever reason tends to be. We've said it on the last two re- album reviews we did for him that um, the fan base, the older fans tend to not like it. Um, the younger fans tend to love it. We're on the older end of his fan base because we're right around his age and we're big co fans. And so are most of our friends at this point, but he's blown up a lot over the last couple of years. Cause Andy, you've said you've seen a lot of people on social media Posting about Co Wetzel that otherwise back when we were listening to him in 2017 wouldn't have known who the hell he was. A lot of famous people, like the people I follow, completely unrelated to music on Instagram, they will have Co Wetzel songs on their stories. Yeah, I mean it's like and people that we know personally that we just wouldn't expect to listen to Co or listening to Co now. And you know he's released some promotional stuff. You know he's put out I think two to three three music videos now. 
Um, as well as he did like a, this, it was kind of funny. It was obviously staged, but the, there was, I don't know if you guys saw, but on YouTube, they posted a, a two part video series is about five and three minutes long or something like that, where Co is always ends up uh, on some random bus uh, thousands of miles away from where the concert's supposed to be. And the, they hire bodyguards to try to get him uh, back to the show. And it, at the end of it, he ends up riding on a four wheeler, presumably in, qu- in quotations, uh, thousands of miles to get to the show on time and uh, rides on Stone Cold Steve Austin style onto the stage mm-hmm. on a four wheeler. <laughs> that was kind of sick. Uh, but I don't, have you guys seen that? I have no, not. but are you sure that's all fake? I've seen a video where Co literally did get on the wrong bus before. I, I'm not saying that he hasn't ended up where he's not supposed to be. I just can promise you he isn't driving across the country on a four wheeler. Yeah, he's not thousands of miles away. Though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the maybe part that's not, fake. Some of it's fake. Maybe not all of it. It's inspired by a true story. <laughs> Yeah, so like all those horror movies, inspired by loosely, yeah, exactly uh, true <laughs> events. <laughs> yeah, like the, this house in Indiana existed; nothing else happened. <laughs> but yeah, uh, but let's get into the thought, brief thoughts on the album as a whole before we break into what we normally do with our uh, three favorite songs, three things we don't like, and three things we like. So we'll start with the brief overview. Um, for me personally, I really like the record. I think uh, thematically with this album, it's an album of a mix of introspection. Uh, just kind of taking self inventory and not liking what you see, not liking what you've become. He's kind of coming to grips with dealing with his fame that has just kind of shot upon him in the last few years. And then also some good old, you know, just shit with relationships that don't work. Um, these are all themes that are very appealing to me. And I've always said that Co, while I wouldn't compare him to like Evan Felker, he is a deceptively uh, deep songwriter at times where some people may discount the loud bombastic rock music and the sing along bangers that are fucking awesome in concert and not actually listen to some of the songs and li- and see what he's trying to get at. But that was kind of like my take on this uh, record thematically. And it was, like I said, that's just something that I'm really into overall. I really like the album uh, because of that. And then the two lead singles are going to be great in concert, like uh, April showers and creeps. That's going to be fun in concert, but uh, what were your guys thoughts on it? I, uh, this is probably almost more personal opinion on the album, but I, this was a lot more of my favorite Co Wetzel. I would like to me, sell out and Harold saw high both had very, the sound to me would basically, I would put them in the same category. They sounded the same. This to me was a lot closer to noise complaint than those two albums sound wise. And I think that's what Co Wetzel do- does that sound the best. That that's obviously that's personal, completely personal biased opinion. But and lyrically, like Logan said too, is that I think Co Wetzel, this was the songs that he writes well, he did more of on this album, which I also thought that he did on Noise Complaint and Out on Parole that that was more of he wrote to that style of lyricism a little bit more. And then for those reasons, I thought those first two albums were better for those reasons. And I think this is a third, I would put in that category where I, this is, I think his best album since noise complaint hands down for me. It, it's great production on it. Great sound. I think it leans towards his, what he can write the best, this very, very solid album. Um, this album was more of a this album was like a when I first listened to it it was a it was a shower not a grower I mean excuse me a grower not a shower Uh, (laughs) when I first listened to it I was like I was fine with it Uh, my my biggest complaint is it's very short Um, and we I listened to it on the way to the mountains this weekend I was amazed how fast I got through it I was through it before I even got on 85 (laughs) <laughs> and I was like, oh, uh, and I had to make sure that Spotify didn't do the weird crap that it does where it just doesn't play some songs. Um, and it, like I said, it didn't. I was like, okay, all right, well, it is short. By Andy's definition, it's barely an album. <laughs> um, <laughs> it is 10 songs with three skits. Uh, That's the sweet but, spot. Well, yeah. I think I, this is not a knock. I do really, really like the album. I like Harold Saw High and Sell Out 
that style more. Um, just because now this song's got this album's got a couple. I think gonna have some really sweet sing along bangers, like you said, creeps. Obviously, I also think better without you is gonna be a good uh, sing along one. Just good the chorus, uh, but I'm not as high on it as Andy. I still really like it. I'm just it's not. I like the little heavier guitar than in for uh, Harold So High or uh, Sell Out because Cold and Alone, man, is just a jammer. <laughs> I love that. I love that song. And so, like I said, that's, that's not a knock. So, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Um, it's a little now, slower speed. It Some of it, yeah, it definitely is. I mean, even even with it being more alt rock, some of yeah. it is, is that way, but in a slower tempo. I mean, yeah. po- like I said, Point to Sad Song being a good example of that. Um, now, some of the co-writing, uh, uh, co-writers on this record were interesting to me. Like, the lead single was written with Ben Burgess, uh, which is a frequent collaborator with Morgan uh, Wallen and uh jaron johnson of cadillac three both of them are uh pretty successful mainstream country songwriters they co-wrote uh april showers with him <clears throat> and then Ernest uh co-wrote oklahoma sun with him but the songs that i tended to gravitate towards were the solo rights and he had i believe four on this record better without you three weeks yellow bush road and solo were all wrote songs that he wrote by himself and I love when an artist has the ability and does write songs by themselves because you tend to get a more personal touch to the song. It's his perspective and his perspective alone. And a lot of times with that being the case, you get some a glimpse into the life and a glimpse of to maybe some things that they're going through. And I think a couple of those tracks really do kind of show something that's there. Um, so with that being said, let's get into, you know, top three favorite songs for each of us on the album. Uh, Andy, if you want to kick that off. We're going to go one by one or do all three at one time. Do all three at once. All right. Uh, I I have to say, I, this one surprised me a little bit when I wrote it. Cabo is going to make my top three. I love the sound of this song. I really don't completely still know what the song's even about. But the way this song sounds is fantastic. I like the, so since Cabo is in Mexico, I'm going to assume it's Mexican instrumentation. But I love how that's incorporated in there and that it, that song, the as I have wrote down, the chorus just fucks sonically. What's, what's Not fun- what Coe's talking about. Well, even I mean, Shetty's singing about fucking, but um, Cabo, yeah. Cabo, I that was a song, Andy, that I didn't like the first two times I listened to it, but mm-hmm. it's been slowly growing on me. And then today, as I was driving home from work, had the windows down. The weather's been nice in North Carolina in the last few days. I was driving down the road and it just kind of hit me. I was like, this kind of feels awesome listening to this with that uh, kind of Spanish influence. Um, definitely being pervasive in this song. But the song itself is funny because the song is basically about being down in Cabo, Mexico and being a complete degenerate. And you end up with this uh, chick, the, a native chick down there. Um, and she fucks you for your money, snorts all your candy. And then she starts telling all her friends. Then there's a line outside the hotel room. They're all just fucking in for his money. Is she and a prostitute, you, though? Does that's that what I don't know. A prostitute? I don't know. Or is, are they robbing him? I mean, no, in a way, no, they're indirectly yeah. robbing him. <laughs> yeah, I, to me, I think it's just like uh, a song that is kind of reflecting on being like a being a minor celebrity where he's famous enough to have pretty girls hanging out with him. But like he also has enough up. money for blow. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I said, this song is all over the place, man. He's talking about watching a donkey show. A donkey show, yeah. With there, the prettiest was... damn girl in Mexico I'd ever seen. And he's like, talking about how he's just uh, fucked up watching a mariachi band play and it, like the way he dressed. And they play Feliz Navidad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and in my favorite line, though, is uh where he's talking about freaking out the house uh freaking out the fucking housemaid, but everybody likes to get paid. <laughs> so she's just in there with, uh, witnessing this monstrosity. Yeah, he is like, a li- fuck it, fuck it, I gotta do a job. He has a line of Mexican women snorting all his cocaine and and taking all his money while while banging him, and then maid walks in and is like, "Well, this is a shit show, but all right." But yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a funny song, and like you said, I think that's a good point, Kyle. About it could be a reflection of. Uh, 
you know, dealing with fame in some ways. Mm-hmm. Um, That's because what I, I don't think it's a prostitute. At least not directly prostitution. N- yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, kind of a wink and a nod kind of thing. Money. Yeah. Yeah. Like a, yeah. a sugar baby kind of situation. Look, hey, baby girl, come get your rent paid. Yeah, he's with a bunch of, uh, you know, in- influencers. <laughs> um, you know, that's the way I took it. Yeah. This is like a, this is like a scene out of a Dan Bilzerian weekend. <laughs> yeah. That's the, that's, the way <laughs> yeah. I, that's the way I looked at this song. So That's, that's a good analogy. There, yeah, it is. There, there's always one song on a co-record that I don't like at first and I end up liking, and I think Cabo is going to be that one for me. Mm-hmm. What's next, All Andy? Right. Number two, uh, this is probably actually going to be, I would be actually my favorite, but the uh, Money Spence, probably, I love that song. The uh, It's actually also going to make part of my list on the bad, but um, from when that guitar drops, one's fucking fire. And then it's yeah. the verse after that that literally makes the entire song for me. The A bloody nose and I got the shakes. I like how he, that it's subtly, he's telling you basically he's got a drug problem. But it's subtle. I like I like that. I blame myself, but I'm too ashamed. That I, I like that the way he does that introspection. And then uh it makes me think of all the good times that we uh sat and watched the sunrise, but the sun is gone and so are you. Then it kicks right back into that ripping guitar. Yep. That just makes the whole it makes the whole song for me. It's just straight banger. It's got a sad verse in it. I mean, it's just everything I could ever want. And I like I even like the outro of it. Because it, rem- it reminds me a little bit of something like a uh, Vinge Sevenfold would do, like in the outro of it. I just it's fucking banger. I don't dislike the song at all. Like, I don't skip it when it comes on, but the song just doesn't do it for me. I think I actually think it's half written. I don't think there's a whole lot to this song outside of a couple of those lines uh, in a vacuum that you said. But I don't I get, disagree with you. But I get the appeal of it sonically you know what i mean because it is a ripping guitar solo mm-hmm. or that, just ripping guitar verse, all the way through i do agree with you the the first oh, on the lyric website it said this is that was the third verse and there's two verses before it but i would call it one verse and a second verse but the uh the first part i would agree with you i don't think there's much there it's just that one verse is enough for me to to bump that song that high and there's a couple of common themes and in multiple different songs like you know he mentioned nose candy and cocaine and a positive light ish on Cabo, even though all the girls down in Cabo were taking it from him. This one is more like you said, introspection is like, damn, I might have a problem with your nose bleeding and you got the shakes. But then you mentioned the line about the sun setting that, you know, that refrain comes back with Oklahoma sun as well. And talking about how, yeah, in that song, you know, using the sun setting in Oklahoma as your baby ain't coming back around sun setting and nothing's changing. She's gone. But I, there are some common things he's used in multiple different songs on this project. But um, but yeah, I get I get your point on that. Uh, what's number three? And then this I was it actually this is where uh, the song snuck on. I was I was debating between Yellow Bush Road and Better Without You right here. And the more I, I looked into it, this one. I actually, I did first. I didn't get Yellow Bush Road, but then I, I learned Yellow Bush Road is is absolutely the best song on the album, lyrically written. It's it's superior. The way it's the way he is telling basically the the story of basically him being famous, mm-hmm. or like the he's the. I'll try to get my whole uh, thoughts here without getting too tripped up. He's he's the hometown hero without the cape. And then it's like uh, he's still just the broke guy that grew, or his hit. I'm going to say it how he said it, the poor motherfucker from Yellow Bush Road. <laughs> that, he, that, but he's uh, and then he gets like where well, my grandparents still look at me the same, but he feels bad when I tell them I'm not okay. Or, or they, when he tells them uh, that he's okay, he feels bad when he tells them that he is okay because he's not. Yeah, 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 because yeah, he's not. And then um. Let's see. I'll go down further. It, I thought this tied back in uh, to this the best is where that uh, I've got everything I ever wanted in my hand. But if trash is treasure, I'd be obliged if you give it to another man. Where he's basically saying, I've got everything that I ever wanted, but it's just it's not as good as it was like that. He would I guess you would think it would be. And then but at the same time, he's also living by he's like, I'm better than most, worse than some. But I'm too blessed to bitch today where his life is a wreck from the fame. And uh, that aspect of it, 
but he's still not going to complain about he's not he's hiding his emotions because basically everybody's going to tell him you got it too good to be complaining about it but on the inside it's killing him I, yeah the way it's fantastically written I 100% agree with you. I I love this song. Um, it's probably I think the best and also my favorite song on the album. And the the lead in to Andy that line that you were talking about. What if trash is treasure? I'd be obliged to give it to another man. I love that entire verse. That part yeah. where he's like, I'm sick and tired of trying to clear my head. It never works. So I just drink instead and keep telling myself that it helps, but it really don't. I mean, there how many people have been caught in that cycle of like you feel like trash because um things maybe aren't all they cracked up to be. And it kind of in my head harkens back to um, what's that song by Morgan Wallen? Yep. That's what I was thinking. Living too. the yeah. dream. Yeah. Living like, the dream. The first yeah. verse of it. Yep. That's yeah, what I was say. Like, yep. The first verse of that song. I love the first line of the song. Like mama don't pray for my success anymore, but mama still prays for me. This living the dream is killing me kind of thing. That's kind of similar to what this song's about. And it makes you like, how many times have we been, people think that, Oh, they've got everything they ever wanted. They must be living the life. But in reality, you know, there's a lot of perils that come with fame and money, and it just isn't maybe all it's cracked up to be. And this is an, an introspection from Co that we haven't seen in a while, maybe since on um, Broke Musician from Noise Complaint. And Shadow People, too. Shadow People, noise too. Noise Complaint. Yeah, because there's a line in that song. Out on parole. Yeah, because like on noise noise complaint, uh, you say shadow people is like, uh, what the hell is wrong with me? I ain't the kid I used to be. That's another common theme you kind of see in this record that was prevalent in this song where he looks in the mirror, doesn't necessarily like or recognize himself and doesn't know how, like, if it's possible for him to be able to get back to the person he used to be. Um, fantastic song. I think this one is one that with a few tweaks could fit it fit in in mainstream country sonically um love the melody this is also the one that we had go mini viral on <laughs> on uh tiktok but love this song i'm I'm with this, you on that this was one where i was trying to <laughs> i was struggling to talk about how good this song was without just literally reading the song from start to finish this yeah. was a tough one to do that with it, he's coming to grips with this fame you know and then he's he's homesick at the beginning of the song but it's like He's he hasn't seen his friends, hasn't seen a pine tree since Christmas. But at the same time, he keeps coming back to the refrain. I'm way too blessed to blit to bitch today. Like, you know, I've got it good. There are people with it worse than me. But at the same time, why do I feel this way? Um, love everything about this song. This is the, for what we were saying earlier. I think this is one lyrically. This is the type of song co writes. Great. Change my ways from out on parole yeah. and uh, shadow people from noise complaint. And I don't, I don't think we've really heard this song since then. And this, I think, is his his forte. Yeah, I'm with you on that. All right, Kyle, what are your top three favorite songs? Well, um, I'm just go ahead and knock out uh, Yellow Bush Road. Um, I also want to give an honorable mention to Money Spent because that like lightweight breakdown they did that you hear a lot in heavy rock when that guitar comes in is just phenomenal that's the that's the best part of the song that in the outro like andy said i could care less really about the rest of the song um but that guitar slaps um the other song i would like to make a mention with is a sad song uh i like it just because i think it's very different than a lot of the other songs uh on the record i get was it drunk driving no, no, not truck driver. That was the one on the last one. Here's, here's one on uh, Sellout that's very similar. Truck driving was on Sellout. Is that the one you were thinking about? Or Yeah, well, it's very slow. Like, uh, Yeah, drunk driving was, was pretty slow in tempo relative yeah. to some of the other tracks. Yeah, no, drunk driving wasn't a very good song, but <laughs> it just gave me a vibe of that song. But he actually did it well on Sad Song. I and, think that song sounds kind of like stained. I mean, I was not surprised at all that you liked this song. Yeah. Especially yeah. like the way the, the yeah, verse leads into that. the chorus. He doesn't sound like Aaron Lewis, but no, that's the doesn't. styling of, of stained. Yeah. With the, yeah. Wow. I can't believe Andy picked that up. That, yeah. Yeah. Man, that's really good. Andy. Andy and I, I talked about that last night. I was thinking I did the same not thing. Make, <laughs> I did not make that connection, but yeah. With, uh, yeah. It does have the little drum upbeat right before he rolls into the main uh, first verse. Uh, yeah, I love this song. Um, and the other one is Three Weeks because it's a very sad song. 
and that's just yeah three I, yeah, three, but, three weeks three I weeks is actually the one that i think is the most different yeah uh it's not like anything else on the record which is mainly what uh attracted me to it just because it stands out um like i said I, none of the the one that really stood out to me is yellow bush road just because it's actually pretty it's one of the deepest songs that i think he's ever written um and the other two are like a solid b and a b plus to me um but like i said the yellow bush road is and y'all, y'all and you already took everything away from it uh that i could say and the rest of them i'm just kind of eh. cabo i like because it's just funny but it's not not anything that I'll, I'll listen to. It. There's no skips on this album, but I'm just not as high on it as as you two. Yeah. Are. Now you mentioned three weeks because that's in my top three. Three weeks. I love that song uh, because, like you said, it is different sonically from all the others. But just the whole setup of the song and like the the detail and the imagery that he paints with it of you know it's been three weeks since the relationship ended three weeks since he's heard from her she's been gone he misses certain things about the relationship he misses you know but some of the things he misses he was kind of a dick like he was he misses making fun of her when he gets high and her fake laugh he misses them him making her watch the same old movie that he's seen a thousand times um he, he misses uh her being at home and him coming home with another woman on his mind and then, like, as the song matures, it seems like his perspective over the course of that three weeks also matures to where he says, I hate this relationship and uh, the the toll that is basically taken on both of them, how sad she was and how he drug it out for so long when he knows that he hasn't and how it's crazy that he's he's learned all this in three weeks. And then he also called himself a pussy in it, which I found funny. <laughs> is is the line, but everything's green and Zen, Xanax tells me, it ain't the fall. Is green and Xanax some kind of drug reference? I, I'm not oh, a drug yes, guy, so I don't know. It's probably <laughs> marijuana. But I don't know. I was, I was one of the ones I didn't understand. He says, but everything is green. And Xanax tells me that it ain't the fall. I didn't I'm, I'm a bit naive on that. drug references. <laughs> yeah, I am too. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Especially pills. Never came close to those. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I like. You know, the like you said, the outro is when the tune changes. Uh, I thought it was funny where he says, "Where I would get high and make fun of you." Well, it's funny at the time. Yeah, <laughs> and it, I mean, it, it's kind of like he's like, "Well, I'm I fucked up now." I mean, but but at the same time, like like you're a hundred, you nailed it with that because like he he kind of like see, he, that whole line right there where it's like i would get high and make fun of you he misses that but then he's like well it was funny at the time and now he's kind of realizing that it's, it's not it, funny, it wasn't yeah. funny yeah. He, he was being a dick yeah. and on top of that like he gets to the point where he's like I, I fucking hate this relationship and you were sad i would drug it out too long and it's like it took me i learned all this in three weeks like there was a different spin on it at the end that i didn't expect um i think that i pre it was that it, it ties in with that theme of introspection that is throughout a lot of this record and it, it encapsulates it very well with this song and i think it's sounding different than a lot of the other songs this one carried some weight uh for me too but that was definitely in my top three favorites yeah like, yeah uh like i said he's just a jerk <laughs> <laughs> in, in this mean, context yeah he was yeah, in the song yeah I mean, it, just, assuming uh, this was like a, a true story but yeah, he's a he's a mega Chad in the song, <laughs> which but but like I said, it shows it shows growth as a person when he says, "I'm even a pussy to write this song." Yeah, I mean, so I I think this is a little more mature. It's not there's some wild and crazy shit on the album, but it's oh yeah, it's also combo. got some <laughs> yeah, it's also got some more mature um, tones to it. Yeah. Um, my other two that I really loved is Yellow Bush Road. We talked about that already, but fantastic song. One I think is one of the best co songs he's put out. And then the third one is So Low. Um, I love So Low. It it was also a solo right for him. All three of these were, but So <laughs> Low. Hey oh, uh, dad jokes for days. But uh, So Low. <laughs> uh, so Low. The pedal steel solo in it, I, I really liked a lot. And I think that it being towards the back end of the track listing, it, it also is kind of 
evolving down with the it's less rock and roll as the album goes along. And I think that's on purpose because the it ends with that skit to be continued, which is a, a snippet of a song. Um, I love the the lyricism and uh, in the verses on uh, solo. Let me pull that up real quick. I just had it. Um, so in the the first verse, he's sitting there talking about how he's hoping and he, he it's a moment of desperation. Like he looks in the mirror, doesn't like what he sees, and he's hoping that God is feeling like he can forgive him. And he's like, and then he also like the human side of his brain is like, and if he doesn't, I guess I wasted all night on my knees praying. But he's like, you know, I'm I'm really hoping that I can be forgiven for the 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 ways that I've acted and the, the things that I've done. And then I really love the second verse even more than that, where it says, they say things are going to get better. I'm out here searching for that to come true because I was taught to never say never, but it feels like never is coming too soon. Like that right there encapsulates the feeling of just like you just feel like you're you've hit rock bottom like there's nowhere to turn you're you you just think that everything is in the shitter and but then the chorus kind of makes me laugh a little bit because he says uh i'm so low it's fucking awesome i love the sadness and the pain Uh, i'm so low it's fucking awesome that uh i'm glad there ain't a cure for insane because if i'm gonna be this low i better be crazy because that's the only way to be able to really deal with it um, and, and part of me thinks that that was kind of said in jest, but I just think this song has a lot more layers to it than, um, uh, than you probably catch on the first time listening to it. Um, and I, I, I said, I, I, I gravitated towards the ones he wrote by himself. I think that those were the, the better written songs, the deeper songs on the album. And, um, it, it tended to have a little bit more of that introspection and just that I don't really like myself when I look at myself in the mirror. He tackled a lot of that on this record, and those that kind of rounded out my my top three favorite. Yeah, I didn't know the three songs. I mean, I mean you shared two of the three, but but they were all solo right? So you told me or when we yeah. started the show. I'm slightly annoyed that Andy picked up on the sad song, and I didn't even think about it. That just was, <laughs> must have been my subconscious just liking it and not even noticing it. Yeah, that was a good pick, Andy. I'm, I'm annoyed that you picked it up before I did. <laughs> Kyle's such a big Stain fan, he doesn't even notice it. It's just part of who he is. It's just my identity, yeah. I identify as a Stain fan. (laughs) Stain to Stan, if you will. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Even better, yeah. (laughs) All right, so let's do the uh, three things about the record we don't like. Kyle, why don't you kick things off with that? Uh, The length. It's another song. It's very short, 38 minutes. Um, I was... Did I tell you before the show? Or I might have said it already. can't remember. I got through it on a road trip yeah. bef- before the first major exit. And I was like, damn, that, that sucks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I played it again, but I was like, I was hoping it was going to get a little bit further than this into the car trip. Um, this, I know there's deeper meanings to his skits. I'm just kind of eh, on skits and in albums because after I listen to it once, I just skip it every time. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. They're they're cool the first time. After that, I'm kind of blah. Um, and I don't really think I have a third. To be honest with you, I don't think I have three bad things on the album. So my three bad things, I would say that I don't like money spent as much as Andy does. I don't I don't hate the song. Mm-hmm. I think it's probably more on the forgettable side for me. But looking at the track list, it's probably my least favorite. Like I just, it doesn't appeal to me sonically like as much as it does you two, but I also just don't think that that there's a whole lot there relative to some of the other songs in the lyricism. It's not a bad song, but it's, it's, it's enough to make it as like one of my, my bads on there Two, I'm kind of with you on the length. I don't think that a record has to be long to be good. And this record is good without it being long. So I'm not saying that it, it took away from it, but Adding another a song or two, I think we've been spoiled in the streaming era. You know what I mean? Because it yeah, used to be yeah. records were nine, ten songs long, maybe at the most twelve. But we've gotten spoiled by so many artists releasing just so much music. But I can't help it. That's the era I'm in, and that's what I'm used to. I do kind of wish there was a, another song or two on here. Um, and then uh, the other thing is, I, it's going to be a good and bad for me. I'm also I don't love skits. I never love skits. 
this album's a little different than previous ones in terms of what I think the skits are saying and how I appreciate uh, how I like them. But so I don't mind the skits in the context of the album, but in terms of going back and listening to the album on shuffle, I tend to like make a playlist of albums with skits and remove the skits. So I don't love that, but I do appreciate what he was getting at with his skits here. So uh, Andy, I'm too lazy to do all that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, my uh, two of y'all's top three has made my bad list, Mm. but I'll start with the, uh, I'll start. This doesn't bother me as much as it did at the beginning. It has grown on me, but the, the beginning of money spent, that his vocals on it sound very similar to sell out and Harold saw high. And I, the sort of open echoey sound or whatever that is. I, I don't like when code does that. I, I much prefer different vocals. So that that's the bad was hard to come by on this one. So that was one. And then um, I'll start uh, on three weeks. What is, is it a mandolin or capo guitar? Or what is, what is the instrument on there? I want to say it was a mandolin, but I don't know that for sure. Yeah. That kills me, the song for me. I, I just. <laughs> Andy do, hates country I music. Do, I do not like it. And then um, the other one is on solo. It's the two words where, where one verse made money spent for me. It's the fucking awesome in solo kills the entire song for me. It's like. It's like you're watching a serious movie and then there's random Will Ferrell comedy put in the middle of it. I'm fine <laughs> with them. Like the, what he's getting at, I'm fine with. It's those words. It just it just does not fit the song. It it takes away from the emotions that he's trying to convey of the song by using those two specific words. It, it kills it for me. So low would have probably been I that probably would have been my favorite song on the album. Those two words have knocked it completely out of recognition on the album for me. Hmm. I thought it did that much damage. <laughs> Was that three? That's three. All right, let's round things out with three things we did like. Andy, since you were so negative there, let's end it on a positive note. What are three things you liked? I'll start here. I can't believe. No, I really thought if y'all mentioned sad song, y'all would have mentioned this. The, uh, Co may have put the mo- the worst burn I have ever heard in a song. Period. I guess your mama fucking hates me. Go ahead, tell her hi. Tell your dad he can suck me. That is, if he ever comes back. That <laughs> yeah. was that. That's too far. I was like, bro, you can't put that in song. You need to chill. And that- the fact that he follows that up with, and you don't deserve this song. <laughs> I was like, my god, that was that was the biggest burn. I, I've never heard a song that burned that bad. Uh, out there, the um, the I thought the track order was done. It, it's per the for the songs on the album. Track order is perfect. Couldn't could not have done that better. And then the uh, the album cover is fantastic. Damn, yeah. and, I was hoping to say that. And when you um, what's it called? Where you bring up the full screen on Spotify after you're playing it and you click at the bottom. All of like the live images and everything on there is fire. Whoever did all that killed it. Are you talking about how it just plays with your phone unlocked? Yeah, if you have your phone yeah, unlocked yeah. and like mm-hmm. not on the search screens or everything, all of those, it's like three or four different ones. They're all fantastic. Mm. I haven't checked that out. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, Kyle, three things you like. Well, Logan, you have convinced me. I'm going to wear my tinfoil hat. Um I do believe there is something deeper to the way where he has the skits placed and also how the tune of the album changes. So I'm going to give that a knock. I, I didn't pay that much attention to it until you had mentioned it. And I think you have convinced me. So I'm going to put the tinfoil hat conspiracy theory on and believe that that was done for a reason and not haphazard. Like I think most of the things he does is, uh, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the album, like Andy said, the album art is fire. The title is really cool. I mean, so it's, it's a play on El Paso. I'm a, uh, I like that. Um, and the final thing that I'm going to give it is, hmm, hmm, what's the? I mean, it's got a bunch of really good songs on it. Um, hmm. you know, I, I got one more thing I don't like. I wish. 
he would have just not said anything and just shadow dropped it. What, like the album? Yeah. But he's working in conjunction with the big boy label now, so. Yeah, I, yeah, I know. It's tough to and, do. And, and, and money ruins everything, but yeah. sometimes if you just shadow drop stuff, I feel like you get immediate, even more cred, even just a like a fake bump, just because people are like, well, damn, this came out of nowhere. Yeah. I mean, we, we knew for a week it was coming out. So I knew to have my, you know, check my phone first thing Friday morning. Uh, but if I had just opened Spotify and saw that it was there, that would have been that's been sweet. So, <laughs> but you know that, that won't happen anymore. I just I don't like teasers, man. Just just don't say anything, and then just when it's ready, put it out. Yeah, you don't like just the tip. <laughs> just the tip. No foreplay for me. <laughs> All right. So three things I like. Um, I'm going to start with. Uh, I love, like Andy said, the sequencing on the the record. The track list, I think, is done in a really, really phenomenal way because, like I said, it, it goes from the heavier rock stuff tends to be a little bit front loaded. I think that Sad Song being the one exception on the back end, because that is a, a pretty alt rock, even though it's not I wouldn't say it's like it's not near as heavy as like money spent, but it is more alt rock than, you know, Better Without You and Yellow Bush Road and things like that. Three weeks. But I love the sequencing because I do think that I, I'm a I'm a believer in it. I'm putting my ten foil hat on too. I'm buying what he's selling right now, and I, I do think that the skits and the sequencing on the album are leading into the fact that it ends on "To Be Continued," and this is where the good comes in. I I love the snippet of a song that he has written that's done. It's obviously a country song done acoustically, and just the Andy. We're getting kind of to that introspection aspect that we were talking about. Where he's like, I've done nothing but lie to you became the master of hiding the truth. And lately I'm starting to feel bad about it. And that's not me. I can't even tell you who I am anymore. The pills I prescribed came from next door. Maybe just maybe they'll make me the man I used to be. And then he gets into the course of, but if they don't, then that's uh care that tunes carried out until it trails off and he starts coughing and that's how it ends. And I think that's just a teaser for the next record. And he himself has said, he's not going to, he's not going to half ass the country record. He's going to go that's all in I, on it. That's what I was going to ask because you don't seriously think he would just do an album like Lubbock, do you? No, no, no. He said it's going to be nine. He said on the Whiskey Road okay. podcast, it's going to be 90s country inspired. I think he's just a loose cannon. And I think he would do it just for the hell of it. Um, he, he said that this isn't going to be an album. He, he didn't say this specifically, but it's not going to be an album full of like kind of hokey songs like Lubbock was. It's good. Yeah, like, okay. And I think that this kind of underscores that point with just the gravity of what he's singing about in this snippet on to be continued. I want so, to hear the rest of that song. I do when too. he says that the, that's not me part. I don't know if he's talking about the feeling bad about lying or lying. Well, I think it was Which the feeling bad him, the feeling bad part, like in he just had, but he's starting to feel bad about lying and starting to feel bad about presenting himself as what he, what he isn't is the way I took it. Or, but, or is it, is it not him to feel bad about lying? He generally just lies and is okay with it. Yeah. Um, the other good I have is, and I'm going to use as an honorable mention for Oklahoma Sun. This song sounds so weird. I love it. Um, I didn't like that song. I, I I love this song. Yeah, the the melody and the chorus is just so pleasing to me, and I don't know why. Um, where it's just talking. Uh, where was it at? It says right here. Um, I'm waiting on a storm. I know it's coming. I'm waiting on the sun to set on down. This Oklahoma sun just keeps on setting, and my baby ain't coming around. And if you look at the context of the song, you know it's a relationship is split. Um, he's like, "How's your life been? Has it been rainbows and carousels?" Did you find your pot of gold? Did you get your thrills? And then it goes into the chorus. Like she's left. She's happier without him. Presumably said she was going to be. He's asking it. Are you actually happier? Is it what you thought it would be? And you know what? He keeps sitting around waiting for her to come back and she's not, but this was an earnest co-write. And I, I love the melody to this. It's just the production on it's So weird. And it's I don't like know why pop, it just, it hit me. It's like a pop rock. Almost. Yeah. Which you, which is funny that I like this one and you don't because it, we've talked about this on and off the air that you guys like the more heavy stuff from the nineties and two thousands, whereas like I love nineties pop rock, and like yep. I'm a little bit more into like I listen, I'm willing more willing to listen to that type of music than like I would say you guys are. So that I think song, that appealed to me. Yeah, that song almost sounds like it has synthesized beats in it. I'll have to go back and listen. It might. I mean, you can you can hear the real drum in it, and you can hear the, like the bass, but it just. It just sounds synthesized, and it's probably not. 
they did a really good job of studio studio lizing it, I think. But but it kind of that's what it sounded like to me. And then to close out, I do think that overall the record and overall the songwriting was better on this than Sellout. I still probably say that I like Harold Saw High a little bit better than this one as of right now, subject to change. But this was an improvement in my mind over Sellout. I think the songwriting improved. I think that the elements of introspection and just the whole just self-loathing of what you've become. Um, maybe I'm fucked up, but I, I like that. And there was less of that. It was like you took the line in Good Die Young in the second verse from Sellout of... Uh, they say he's gone crazy. They they get like when he's ran out of pills, but then he's like, maybe I'm just really alone. It's like that. And then he's expanded upon it of across multiple songs on uh, El Paso. So I think that mission accomplished for what Co set out to do um, is kind of like my my kind of closing thoughts on that. He he wanted to set out to make like a uh, one last, at least for now, shebang of an alternative kind of heavier rock record, but also. I imagine, you know, he wants to, like, as any artist would, grow as an artist. And Co definitely cares about that stuff. But he still has enough fun songs that are well-written that are going to be bangers in concerts. Like, Creep's well-written song is going to be great in concert. Same with April Showers. So, um, I think overall, I'm I'm very pleased with the project. Yeah, I agree. I think it's, I think it's better than Sellout and Harold's All High. It ranks higher for me. No, I think Harold's All High is better. Noise Complaint's still my favorite co record so far. Yeah. It's either Noise Complaint or Out on Parole. I really like Out on Parole, too. Yeah, I do, too. I, see, it's it's going to be hard to supplant Noise Complaint for me just because I was so early on co first. for someone outside of Texas. That, it's the first one you heard. Yeah. I mean, well, mm-hmm. that it was a mix of that one and Out on Parole because yeah, that was out before Noise Complaint. But I, I was like, I was early in on Co for people outside the state of Texas. So it's like, I've been listening to him for probably five or six years now. Uh, whenever, yeah, five or six years now. And so it's like, to your point, Kyle, like it is the first stuff I heard. And this first stuff, I kind of was just like, I, I really dig this. I was a young 22, 23 year old when I started listening to it. I was like, I can fucking vibe with this. And there was mm-hmm. some anger in that album. And Co does anger yeah. very well. Yeah. Maybe I was an angry 22 year old. I don't know, <laughs> but, but yeah, overall good project. Um, uh, let us know what you think in the Spotify description. There's a link where you can click that, leave us an up to one minute voicemail, um, telling us your thoughts on, uh, sell out what your favorite songs are and maybe even, or not sell out. That's the last record. El Paso, what your favorite songs are. And, uh, even tell us what your favorite co uh, co album is. Um, uh, we'd be interested to know that as well, but, um, well, for make sure you give us five stars and a great review. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon, Stitcher. Uh, go to the website, coldcansnetwork.com. A trucker Andy has made his blogging debut, and the title is Kip Moore Has Righted the Wrong. So you need to check that out on coldcansnetwork.com. This is this episode of Country and Cold Cans. I'm Logan, sitting here with Andy and Kyle, and we'll see you next time.